This is the first episode of Mac's brand new Ford Ranger Wild Track build. I just love building cars, I'm excited. We're gonna install arguably three of the best modifications you can do to any four wheel drive. That being long travel suspension from Superior Engineering, twin locking it with a Harrop e-locker in the front. Get a twin lock, drive it up a hill, do something crazy. And wrapping a brand new set of black rhino rims in mud terrains. Stick around at some point in this episode, we're gonna let you know how to win a complete set of bash plates from Superior Engineering for your ride. You're not gonna wanna miss that. Let's get stuck into this right now. Hey, TJ, what are you doing? You busy? Oh yeah, you're always editing. <laughs> can I, can you could give us a hand. I just gotta test these bash plates out. Maybe do some stretches before you come over. Let's go. <laughs> Is that all you got? Go on, harder. Harder, hit it. Bass plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? You're bad shot. What else is it? They've got to cop a lot more. Go on, let's try out the back ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've tested it fully yet. Hang on. Nah, I gotta get something a bit harder than a punching glove, eh? Oh, oh. <laughs> go get something a bit harder. All right, Whoa. this might that, do a trick. Is that king chrome? Yeah. Oh, this might this might go through it. Oh, you're right, actually. It's pretty strong. Yeah, that's way too strong. <laughs> Pure engineering, can't go wrong. Little trick I learned over the years. So, Inox or WD-40, it's, uh, it's pretty good stuff. So, little life hack for you. This is the fuel bash guard, by the way. Oh, sorry, the fuel tank underbody guard. We have got plenty of parts arriving. On my right and my left, we have all new Superior Engineering underbody guards. Now, these are all completely stainless. I'll have a look how thick they are. Very nice, not gonna rust under your car. Cool to see, all Australian made and folded and designed and whatnot. I've noticed, so we have the 2.0 remote res front and rear shocks, fully adjustable in the front. Unless they've changed the, uh, they've changed this a little bit. So the mounting, so that's pretty cool. I'm keen to see what they've done there. These are the wheels I've been talking about. So these are the black rhinos. They look like a beadlock rim, but they're not, as you can see, one piece. That's right, Harrop have already got, hey, get back here. Harrop already have the locker, front locker set up for these, even though they're new. So They've had these since they came out. They got early access from Ford, so that was pretty cool. So, twin locked, spicy wheels, spicy underbody, and we got the lift going. These are a very new ute. There's not a lot of parts for them, so I'm gonna show you what's out, what's available, and what it can do. I just love building cars, I'm excited. I just, I just wanna see it lifted with wheels, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so I've got my trusty handy venues, and it is uh, four mil. Let's not forget, what tires are we running? The Nittos. Oh, I absolutely love these, have always loved these. There's one time I didn't run them, wish I had these, but at the time I couldn't get them because they were rare as hen's teeth, but they're coming back. They're coming back, there's heaps coming in. All this is going in that Ranger that you can win. Time to get stuck in. Don't actually need a hoist to do all these mods. You guys have seen me do it several times on, uh, on the ground lying on my back under some jack stands. But if you are doing it at home, make sure it's on jack stands. Do not work under a jack, no matter what you do. Like one of these, this is a king chrome one. Uh, never let me down. Something important to remember, guys. I'm gonna start ripping these wheels off. I've taken some measurements. I know my guard to hub measurement from factory, the front is 550 mil. Now at full droop, it's 630 mil. The rear is 590 and it drops to 690. Obviously that droop, changes with articulation generally. At a full droop situation, I can, I can measure what I've gained. I'm not actually gonna use your tools that someone's gonna win, but in here we have Aha. wheel nut impact socket. Have a little plastic sleeve over them. That protects your rim, stops you from scratching your rim. I don't know how many wheel nuts I can actually fit in my back pocket. That's me. 
24. <laughs> I've just found something very funny. This is factory. Have a go at this exhaust. Up, over, and just, yeah, just dump it straight down, boy. I don't mind that. Legally, that's okay. 40 or 60 mil past the last seam seal of the cab, which is here. So, just a little note for you guys doing your exhaust at home. Only on one side. So it's only on one side. So that is the position sensor for how much weight is in the rear of the car. And that adjusts the headlights at the front. You can't get rid of that. That's technically illegal to get rid of. You have to have it. Just want to be careful of if you're uh, off-roading. I know the MP300s, they tend to break a lot. As soon as I'm doing the suspension and the lift, I've got to pull the struts out anyway, which means I'll have the spindle disconnected, so on, so forth. I may as well pull the CVs out, pull the diff out, and install our Harrop front locker. If you are doing a twin lock build, it's worth doing it all at the same time. And I highly rate twin locking. It's got to be the best modification. Me and TJ rave about it all the time. It turns your full drive into just a mega, mega capable car. Ford's put a cast alloy spindle in instead of um, steel because it's not magnetic. So it's interesting. Maybe they've been doing that for a while. I don't know. For those of you who are just tuning into our channel and haven't seen me pull apart an IFS before, this is your shock and spring coilover setup. You basically have to get that out. So there's three bolts on the top, three, two bolts on the bottom on this one. Sometimes I'll just have one bolt going through. Just undoing those bolts isn't gonna get it out. This is under a lot of tension and pressure. Undo the spindle and the upper control arm, that's which is also known as a UCA. Undoing this a little bit, smacking that with a hammer will shock it and it'll pop out. Then you can continue to undo your nut. Undo your top bolts, undo your bottom bolts, this whole assembly should pull down enough. I generally do the top because I'm usually changing UCAs at the same time. Because we're not going a big lift, we currently don't need to do the UCAs. Going a big lift, like a three, four, five inch lift, five is definitely not recommended in any IFS car. You're gonna run into wheel alignment issues and clearance issues. So that is where your top UCA needs to be modified or changed or a different one installed. Oh, come on. Weird, because that should like swivel and everything should free up, but it's not. So when I pull this down, it's pulling the strut out. It's a puzzle. Cars are just a puzzle. So still rolling. Nothing to see here. As I was saying, you just basically undo the bolts and you know, just pull her out like that. It's really, it's really quite easy and your strut comes out. <laughs> I struggled like all hell to get that out. Uh, I disconnect the sway bar. I end up disconnecting the top UCA. Uh, the bottom doesn't really work because the spindle goes under the UCA. Loosen the, I don't like to loosen these because it really throws your wheel alignment out of whack, but when you're lifting a car, get a wheel alignment. That is like a must, you have to do it anyway. Loosen the lower control arm bolts, which actually adjust your wheel alignment, which allowed the LCA, lower control arm, to drop down enough that we could pull the strut out. So I'm doing the uh, CV, CV nut and bolts. So my <laughs> impact sockets didn't go big enough. Hey, King Chrome, can you send me some, some slightly bigger ones for axle hubs and things? Whoa, when they sent this bad boy. Three quarter inch ratchet. That is a big, big dog. 35 it is. 35 mil socket. I don't have a three quarter inch rattle gun. Okay, slight issue. Uh, this is something you might not have in that kit. It's a 35 mil socket. If you own yourself a Ranger or a lot of IFS cars, I believe the Hilux is the same. You're gonna need to get yourself a 35 mil, preferably impact, but this is three quarter, I ain't gonna break it. So. That is the only way to get your CV out, is this big nut here. I'd like to say it was easy, but actually get the pry bar to, to, to pry it out of, the, out of there, you know, it was really tight press fit. It is a new car, I don't know what to expect. But anyway, that is the Ford Ranger CV. We might jam a rag down there because there's a bit of oil starting to come out. All right, we're on to the next side and uh, let's just hope it goes a little bit better than the first one. But hey, 
at least you guys got to see me struggle. I'm no expert, just like you guys, just a bloke having a crack in his shed. Next up, we got suspension out, CVs are out. We're gonna pull these tinny, crappy bash plates, if you'd call it that, oh, I don't know. It's already copped a bit of a scratch and a hiding and a dent. We're gonna get them off, then we're gonna empty the diff. So, uh, last time I made a mistake of not emptying the diff, took it to Sam. I emptied it on his bench. I've bought myself a press now, so I don't need to go out to Sam's. I can do it all from here. Gonna get this diff empty and then pull it out. The electric motor for the electric steering on the steering rack, so that's kind of cool. And that is the baby diff we're about to pull out. You know, pump it up. You got to pump it. Don't forget this this time. Ah, oh, it's a different size. Woohoo! Goes. Yeah. Woof. Now they're not actually that heavy off memory. Yeah. <laughs> not compared to the diffs going in the Chevy anyway. I'll, let's go let's go compare the front diff of this to the Chevy diff going in. Ta-da! It's a 2024 Ford Ranger front diff. This is 70s to 80s Chev Dana 60 front diff. <laughs> they got a 9.25 inch crown wheel uh, center in them. That's just the front. The rear is like a 10 point something inch. That's a 14. And you wonder why these can't cop a beating quite like these can. I can't even lift this. Oh, that's about it. That's about all the movement I can get out of that. It weighs about 300 kilos. So now the diff's out. It's Harrop time. We've got ourselves the Harrop center that our factory ring gear will bolt to. Now we have the wiring harness that comes with it. Makes it all really nice and easy. And these are some other bits and bobs that goes on here. So also inside here, you'll find warranty registration along with your wiring and some cable tires. <laughs> Literally every time I wig out because the other side of this plug is actually inside the cable tie. So don't toss the cable tires, mate. I've already got some. The plug is inside there. I've nearly done that so many times now. We're actually not gonna use our switch. Something pretty cool that Ford's already pre-wired some switches in on the overhead. So I'm gonna utilize the factory switches in the car. I can't believe how light this is. Start splitting this bad boy apart, hey? Also, what do you do with hair? Like, do I get a haircut? Do I, I don't know, I'll just, it's been so long, long for so long. I don't know how to grow hair back. One other thing I forgot to mention, if you are installing this yourself and you need a little bit of help, there is instructions on Harris website. Make sure you check them out because such as the N81, it's a little notch you gotta take out of the casting of the housing. So you just gotta do a little shaving. So just, just be careful. You don't on the Rangers, you do on the N80. Got the diff split apart. This is the Harrop Center. So we need to get these gears off the factory center and get them bolted up to that with Loctite. Make sure you put Loctite on those bolts. Harrop does speculate a certain type of Loctite. So you should check that up on the website. I'm just gonna reuse the bearings so we don't have to tap out the races and change them. Like it's done 100 Ks and I didn't know what bearings they were until I pulled them apart. I'm quite happy to reuse the factory ones. Stay tuned after the break, I'll get the center out. <laughs> there we go. Pain in the ass that was. We got the center out, undone all the bolts, and it is an interference fit. Uh, so you will have to get like your, all in your King Chrome toolbox you're gonna win. <laughs> Little chisel and a hammer, and just separate it. And voila, and then this will go onto there, like I said, lock tight, lock tight, lock tight. Tells you which one to use, I'm about to look it up and let you know. Make sure you lock tight the bolts guys, onto the ring gear, and even your housing together, just everything. It comes from factory lock tight, make sure you put it back with lock tight. And your bearing goes back on, it lands in the exact same place as the factory one. Now I've already sort of worked my way around doing these up till the ring gear pulled in. Now, what I'm gonna do is use this bad boy to 
that. It's gonna hold it so it doesn't turn and twist and whatnot. Then we're gonna apply our 262 Loctite that I've just got our Loctite blue gasket sealant for the diff when we put it back together. Harrop guide, it says 100 foot pounds. We're gonna work in like a star path. Cross them off as you talk them. Holds it all in there nice and hunky-dory. Woo, look at that. All right, let's get our last bearing on. You need to pick a spot with your anti-rotation tab lined up where the wire's gonna end up and at the top of the diff. Don't put it at the bottom because you don't want oil leaks. It's an 11.5 mil hole that we gotta drill. So this is probably the scary part of it all. Let's make sure that the uh, locker wiring here doesn't pull in or get caught or anything like that. So that's one big thing to, to look out for. And you have to make sure that the anti-rotation tab is lined up. Uh, mine's perfect. Put it all together, get it in the car, get a twin lock, drive it up a hill, do something crazy. How do you think about that? Diff breather and my wires go out the same spot. I'd like to say I did that on purpose, but I 100% fluked it. I know, Mac with no hat on, how weird. To get it up and over this cross member here. Oh, we're on second stage, she pumps a bit faster. Oh, there you go. already hooked up. Oh my god. Oh, there we go, up and in. Woohoo! Lucky it doesn't weigh 300 kilos like the Dana 68. That'll have to be the difference between boys and men. With the small and the big dip. So, instead of them being pressed studs, they're bolts. So that's gonna make it heaps, heaps easier to get the strut back. I reckon we can probably put the top in first. And look at that, because there's no studs. She's straight in, in like Flynn. Pop these back in, these will line up when I wanna bring this back up. This will go up to the resi mount. Ah, oh, bloody, that's bloody nice. That is very bloody nice. With Fords, these bolts in the bottom are studs, they don't come out. Well, you could bash them out, but it'd be, wouldn't be very easy. You've got to get the strut all the way out of the threads to get it out. What the hell do I do with that? Well, this is the bracket here that Superior have developed. It's very, very cool. Picks up all factory holes. That's gonna hold our remote res. Superior supply us with some rib nuts to go into the factory hole. Rib nuts require a tool. And it's like a rivet gun and you squeeze it, it pulls in tight on the steel for anyone who's never used one. You can buy these King Chrome kits for about 80 bucks. They're really handy, they're great for sheet metal. You can't get a nut behind a thin bit of steel. Perfect for that. So that is the remote res all installed. So we've picked up the factory belt here. We've done our two rib nuts here clamp down the inner guard in behind the bracket. So we don't want that rubbing through that. So that's, that's what the clamp's for. Using my tools, but making sure it's in this kit. So, have a go at this. Full rib nut kit, complete with some rib nuts. Woof, there you go. You must ensure you don't stuff up and that is putting your diff oil back in because literally within like a couple of kilometers, if you drive it without oil, it's all over. I think it takes 80 watt 90, otherwise 140 gear oil is always good too. That's what diff guys seem to swear by it. That's the front done. Time to move on to the rear. So we've got shocks, remote res, remote res mounts, and extended shackles. Something pretty cool I found that a lot of other of the dual cab industry cars don't have is disc brake rear. That all went in so nice. The brackets for the remote res are just fantastic. Extended shackles also give you, there, there are two inch shackle, but it'll give you one inch of lift. So yeah, you're gonna gain a bit of flex and you're gonna gain about one inch of lift out of that. 
That was nice, that was a good bit of kit. Longer shots, get more flex. I'll give you a look now anyway. As you can see, there's no holes, no greasing capabilities. You have to pull it out to grease it. No good. Superiors has grease nipples on it. Runs up the middle, pushes out here, greases your bushes. Everyone's happy, no more squeaky bushes after cape. This is the factory shock. This is a superior remote res shock. 45 mil longer. You have adjustable dampening there, so that's a great feature to have. Soften up the rear or harden up the rear, it does make a difference. Okay, some of you guys might have seen in that drone sort of pan. I actually had this set up backwards, so I had the remote res facing the other way and it had a bit of a loop going under the chassis. It wasn't ideal. This is the correct way to do it, so <laughs> that looks heaps better. Got some big boys coming in hot. They're gonna look good. How good's fresh rubber though? <sighs> ah! the pr these are called Black Rhino Prims. You don't worry, you're still supporting wheel pros. Wheel pros, yeah. So they bring them over. Then your local tire shop or Fat Bars. Mo Fat Bars is a huge distributor of these. So they're always good to hit up. So, but otherwise your local tire shops. So yeah, these are a zero offset, 12 and a half inch tire. You got the flares coming, this doesn't look too what? bad. They're not yet, <laughs> if we, yeah, see if we need them. If we need them, we'll have to get some flares. They're not just for looks, mate. <laughs> so. Yeah, because it, like, if you're dragging over rocks, your bolts get. It'll bashed. It'll bash a bolt, you'll never get it undone, or it'll snap the head off the bolt. That protects it. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Smart idea. Oh, oh where'd you come from? Did you know? What? Well, you did know, because we're both across it. But there is a giveaway within a giveaway, like you just said. <laughs> you're joking. Superior are gonna give you guys the opportunity to get a complete set of plates slim, similar to this. If it's available on the website for your vehicle, you can win yourself a set. Doesn't have to be a Ranger. Doesn't have to be a Ranger. If they but make it for your car, you can enter and you can win it. So all you have to do is leave a comment on this episode down below and let us know what car you're hoping to put them on. And you're in the draw, guys. We're gonna draw it in one week. We'll choose a random comment selector. Could even be your mate's car, your mum's car, your dad's car, yeah. your grandpa's car. It doesn't I mean, matter. If you win, <laughs> if you win, you win. So you'll, I'm sure you'll find a vehicle that they supply them for. And you'll get to protect it as well as this. It's pretty exciting. Easy or hard? Easy, Easy? once you have the instructions. Oh, okay. I normally throw them out, which I did. <laughs> I then rang Angus and said, mate, do you reckon you send me those instructions again? <laughs> There's a link on the website, guys. I'll even I'll put it in the description of this video for all bash plates and bar work installs that Superior Supply. You can go on there and they're all PDF instructions step by step. Yeah. Hey! Twin locked, new suspension, new tyres, new rims. Bloody, just kicking goals on this thing, aren't we? Probably shouldn't have too many dramas today. Nah. Except if I left this set to 5 PSI, TJ must have been using this. Yeah, This thing's it. a bit heavier than the Luxy, we might not go that low. <laughs> Today is just a little bit of a test day, just to make sure it's all working appropriately. We're going to test out the uh, shock rates because they're adjustable 1 to 7, yeah? Yep. You know, really figure out what, what works best, but uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward, this thing. Just throw in four-wheel drive and press the go pedal. <laughs> oh, literally, put it in sand mode and away you go. Sand mode, you reckon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got, we got the family here today too. Yeah, we got everyone. Got everyone. Oh, this thing just looks so good. Dude, no bad angles. What do you reckon of the look so far? Oh, dude, like photos don't do it justice. It is just, it's, it's just, it's just a wet, it looks so big and American and just cool. This is gonna be 
Extremely hard to hand the keys over, I'm telling you. Who's that? Over there, it's DJ. Now obviously, there's still heaps more to come on this. We've got sliders, bash plates, snorkels. As always, let us know down in the comments what you reckon we should add to this beast. Let's give, let's put them down to like one. Oh, it's in there. So we'll just put the rears on. I think I'm just gonna go one all round, I think. Yes, so uh, unfortunately. That is unacceptable. Yeah, so that is a zero offset 12 and a half wide tire. So yeah, we're gonna need some, some flares. Come at high tide, so there's people bogged everywhere. Good chance to test out the Rangers' uh, towing capacity, eh? Oh yeah, everyone's <laughs> absolutely bogged. This guy's actually, if we don't get him out soon, he's gonna fall off the edge. Yeah, the tide's still coming up. <laughs> Just needed a bit of low gear, that's all it was. Oh, day for it. Day for it, mate. This side's always so pleasant. Oh, yes, you're kidding. Oh, not a bad spot here. We normally go right up the end, but it's so windy, southerly. Yeah, it's oh, kind of a pretty good spot here. Like the, the sort of mountains and stuff protects the wind, so. Anyway, we're cooking some food on the back, yeah? Yeah, just uh, if you do go here, make sure you're off the track. Yeah, there's a road. This is a bit of a track here, so. <laughs> yeah. We are having some bacon, lettuce, tomato sangers. You happy with that? Yeah, I'll do. Yeah. Whatever. So thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the spot? Oh, it's very nice, but what I do think is I'm not driving, am I? <laughs> the drunk uncle's back. Yeah, it kind of makes yeah my Nissan feel old all of a sudden. How old is your? It's like two yeah. years old. But two years old. This certainly makes it feel even older. <laughs> it's got some tech in it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. I should be a salesman for four. It, it continues to impress me. Everything, everything's just working great. How do those shocks go on oh, one? Shocks, perfect. Spring rate, absolutely perfect. It's soft. There's no bangs. A lot of IFS cars. <laughs> Navarra's bang up in the So this is first prize, still more to come on it. Camper is second prize, still more to come on that. Third prize is the $10,000 868-piece toolkit from King Chrome. It's quite funny on if you guys are on my Instagram. So many guys just want the toolbox. <laughs> so, so next episode, we've got some sneaky mods from Pirate Camp Co. We've got some fat bars gear. I'm not going to tell you, you'll have to watch. A few other sneaky bits and pieces coming for it. Shed life touch. A little bit of a shed life touch. We're going to test her out on another island, actually. Don't forget how to enter, guys. Any shirt is one entry, so buy 10, that's 10 entries. Well, 30 chances to win. <laughs> um, hoodies are worth two entries, and there's a specific sticker pack on there. That's also worth an entry. It goes off each item you buy. So if you buy 10 items, that's 10 entries. Big thanks for all the support and supporting the giveaway. It supports the channel massively. I'll just say support a few more times. Support, support, support. <laughs> <laughs>